beloved. Today we begin the, the first reading, we begin the first, the, the letter to the Hebrews, and uh, very, <coughs> more, it's more seen as a, a homily, a long homily, rather than a, than kind of a, a letter to a people. And you can see this, the author, as we'll see as it gets developed, he's really um, speaking to probably some Hebrew priests and um, uh, scribes, and so it's a little higher level. Um, with some of the theology and things that get spoken about, because he's trying to basically convince them that we've, we're moving, God is moving us from an old covenant to a new covenant, from an old way of worship and sacrificial worship to a new way with a new sacrifice, from an old covenant priesthood to a new covenant priesthood. So there's this transition from, um, uh, as, well, as Jesus said in the gospel today, from a time of promises to now a time of fulfillment. This is the time of fulfillment. So Old Testament is all about promises. New Testament is all about the fulfillment of those promises taking place. And so uh, um, when you, as you read it, some of it, it seems very over our head. And then to make matters worse, the author at some point will say, you know, this is just uh, milk, like milk for a baby. This should be easy for you guys, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, oh my gosh. What am I missing? So what's the real food like then if you really were getting deep? Uh, part of it is because we just we admit we have to really search and work hard to dig up some of the cultural understandings that they just take for granted. Some of the natural teachings that they, they take for granted. You know, be like a, a brand new person who never heard of Catholicism or experienced it, walking into the Mass. What are we doing here, you know? Why are we saying these things? How do you know what to say? Why are you kneeling? Why are you sitting? Why are you standing? What do you, What's going on here? You know, so it takes a lot of, of time and research. You have to dig in and, and then pick some of these things up that naturally we take for granted. The first point that the author is making today, of course, we see is the superiority of Jesus, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> and so he's showing this transition from old to new. As he says, look, in the times past, God spoke to us in partial, in various ways to our ancestors through prophets. But now he's speaking to us through the Son. The Son, he shows, then is greater, is not just a prophet like any other prophets, you know, but greater than all the prophets. And he gets to describe some of the um, being of the Sonship. He is, he is made heir of all things. Through him, he created the whole universe. He's the refulgence of his glory the imprint of his being. Basically, as John says, God in the flesh. You know? Invisible God in the visible flesh. <clears throat> and he sustains all things by his mighty word. So think about that. Jesus not, didn't just create the universe, but he is constantly sustaining it. You know, that's, that goes against some of the other philosophies that were out there, maybe out there today, that God just kind of set up created the universe and then walked away or just watches it happen now. No, Jesus is, God is always very intimately involved with his creation. He creates the universe and all of us and he is sustaining us every moment. How? By his mighty word, logos. Remember we talked about this, it means word, account, reason, mind, wisdom, presence. So God is sustaining us by his very thoughts of us. God thinking about us constantly, all the time. You know, we think, does God care? Yeah. Am I alive? <laughs> Tend to yourself. Yes. God cares about us. Everything that's happening, He is sustaining us through all the ups and downs of life because He's thinking of us with His perfect, infinite, divine, eternal love. That's powerful. Powerful. That's one of our goals as disciples of Jesus as sons and daughters of God, adopted sons and daughters of God, is to grow, as we began saying yesterday, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this supernatural conscious awareness of God's presence with us. As you and I grow in union with God, we're growing in a, in a conscious awareness of His presence with us to where we get to the point where I don't have to stop and think and quiet myself to recognize God's presence with me. I just now, it becomes this natural instinct. I just know, naturally, it's one of my instincts, like breathing, that God is with me and in me. 
when we breathe, we don't think about every breath. You know, we just breathe. And the same thing when we have this supernatural conscious awareness that begins with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and where we're aware of God's presence with us, that, you know, when we're learning to pray and learning to recognize His presence, we take time, we quiet ourselves, we look at different techniques for prayer and recognizing God's presence. But as we can practice that and grow in that, and our supernatural consciousness grows as well, it becomes this natural instinct, the awareness of God's presence with me. The awareness of God thinking of me, we could say, and sustaining my very being. He goes on to continue to just say how the, this only begotten Son, Jesus, has a name more powerful than any other name that's been given in the whole universe, which we talked about very briefly on the 3rd, January 3rd, that was a, a Sunday, but it was also the memorial for the holy name of Jesus. We talked about it's a great way to pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, and, and, and his superiority over all the angels. Now, every time they saw angels in the Old Testament, you know, they're like powerful, terrible beings that make you tremble, you know. Uh, and that's why they always had to say, do not be afraid. <laughs> Peace be with you. Those were always the first words, you know. And so here there's, he's saying, look, you thought the angels were powerful, man. Jesus is far superior to the, all the angels even. And all of this superiority, though, there's so much intimacy at the heart of it. As we come back to it, what's centered on our passage today is how Jesus, this eternal Word of God, the eternal mind of God become flesh, sustains us by His mighty Word, sustains us by His mighty thoughts. Jesus sustains us every day, every moment by thinking of us intimately. All, it's been compared to how, uh, no offense fathers, but how a mother constantly holds her children in her heart and is thinking of her of them constantly every little detail in general we just know women are made more detail oriented than men when it comes to the children <clears throat> doesn't mean that we don't men don't love the children but the women it is there and that detail this is how the god thinks of us and is aware of us constantly aware of everything that's happening in our life, every detail, every bump, every bruise, every wound, every insecurity, everything that's going on in our life. God is intimately aware and sustaining us through it. Our part is the best, as we said, to practice that presence of God, practice growing in that supernatural conscious awareness. And we can do it in very practical ways. And one of the easiest ways, um, for our Brother Lawrence, who has spirituality was practicing the presence of God, he basically said, do everything with Jesus, you know. Okay, Jesus, let's go wash the dishes. Okay, Jesus, let's go take a walk. Okay, Jesus, let's go spank the kids. Okay, Jesus, let's go take out the trash. Everything, it's that conscious statement, come on, Jesus, let's go do this. Come on, Jesus, let's go to Mass and worship the Father, you know. That conscious statement begins to grow that conscious awareness inside of us. Pretty soon you're just doing it, having this natural con conversation again, like an instinct, like something you're not even having to think about. It's just always happening in your life. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your great eternal love for each one of us, that you think of us constantly, Lord, and, you, and your very thoughts of love are sustaining our being every moment. We pray you'd impart to us, Lord, uh, all the grace that we need to grow ourselves in a supernatural conscious awareness of your presence with us so that that would become a natural instinct in our in our life in our christian way of life we pray all these things together through christ our lord amen